you Israel are the clay and I'm the potter and I can do this for you and, uh, and, and I can do that. God is an expert at working on clay in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 you find out when God created man he created him from the dust of the earth and, and uh, formed him <clears throat> and uh, out of this uh, uh, dust and clay and earth and stuff and made him into a living soul and, and uh, God said I, I can do this I can make anything out of anything and God refers to himself uh, a couple different times as a potter and Jeremiah was learning what to teach Israel <clears throat> And, uh, and and what he could teach the people by that and, and maybe what they've been through and what they are going to go through and what could happen if they would be willing to let uh, the Lord uh, work in a, in a great way in their lives. Um, I'm pretty familiar with this because I took um, uh, I took uh, pottery in high school and uh, I know you, you're going to laugh at me in the classes I took but um, I was a troublemaker and uh, they decided to just push me through and gave me all the electives I wanted to take and uh, and so I uh, they kept that with me I, I quit being a troublemaker when I became a Christian um, my junior and senior year I was serving the Lord and I wasn't a troublemaker anymore but I was already in the system as hey give this guy easy classes and uh, and and so I was in uh, uh, they, that was the art building out of art building across the street from the high school in, in one you had the drafting class and the other one you had art uh, and drawing and the other one you had ceramics and I was the master of all three of those things and uh, I took all those classes like that and uh, it was it was not a class that you would have went and uh, it would not have gotten you um, a great career um, that's not what it was for okay mostly it was a stoner we called them stoners back then and uh, stoners were uh, stoners uh, guys who smoked pot and uh, and and sat around and did nothing besides that and ate potato chips and uh, that was a stoner and that's they did and uh, and they took that class because they tried to make pottery things to smoke their pot with and uh, that they thought they could get away with that um, they didn't know the art teacher said the first day of ceramics class she said just so you know I went to art school in the 60s so you're not gonna get any uh, marijuana paraphernalia by me and uh, and that was our ceramics class but it was a fun class to learn and take things and you would have a um, you would have this uh, this this wheel it was electric with us but back then in the day it was uh, you'd spin it with your foot and and you, you would you would take a piece of clay and you would before you put it over you take it to a table and you just beat the clay you had this big hunk of wood you just whack it and whack it and you'd fold it back over and whack it and you'd pound it and hit it and pound it and hit it and all you're doing which you're, you're making the clay condensed um, so there's no bubbles in it and 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 so that it was just solid it was a solid piece of clay there could be air pockets in it and stuff like that and that would come out later and so you you'd beat your clay for a long time and uh, and get into one solid heavy thick thing with no nothing inside of it you walk over and you plop it right there in the center of that pottery wheel and uh, and then you just start spinning it and what you do is you would just stick your hand in the inside and the outside and you just start uh, pushing together and lifting it up and you would start forming um, whatever you wanted to make and and, and it'd be coming up and, and get higher and higher and uh, but it was going fast and uh, oftentimes you would do that uh, you'd get you try to make a, maybe a little wave in it so it have pretty design and you get a little too thin and all of a sudden the, the, the side of collapse and you just go and you just fall to pieces and go flying off of the pottery wheel and and it was done and you go pick it up off the ground take all the dirt off it and start pounding it again but you can still make it if you weren't careful and somebody else would go and they would uh, you, you would be on the table and the table wasn't clean and you would you would begin making and you're pounded on that table but you didn't pay close attention and 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 all of a sudden you're getting there and you start forming and it gets thinner and all of a sudden you feel something hard in there that, that hard thing was a big piece of hardened clay or dirt or something else you got put, hooked there and that thing would catch your finger and rip the thing to pieces because that 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 stuff wasn't supposed to be in there and 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 so it oftentimes you would work on one piece with one one piece of clay three or four times especially when you're starting out because you just weren't very good at it and or you got done and it was too thin or too tall or whatever yeah and, and you just learning to do it and you, you would make these things and then they put it over and uh, after you got it done you would uh, you would take it and you'd you'd, you'd uh, have it on a little piece of wood and you'd go and they would take it and put it in the kiln and uh, the kiln would just a low temperature big oven 
thing. And uh, if you did it right, you get out this nice pretty piece of pottery and uh, and then you could paint it and take it home or whatever. Um, if you didn't get the bubbles out, those bubbles, when the kiln got warm, it would expand and that, that, that pottery would blow to bits. It would just it would break to pieces, and many times your pottery would be next to someone else who didn't get everything out of it. And uh, when the heat comes, it blows up and it breaks your pottery too. And that happened oftentimes as that happened. And 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 so when God is is being the the potter, he many times starts us off by kind of beating out the stuff that's going to destroy us later. <laughs> trying to get out your faults, trying to get out the things that when the heat comes up, they're gonna they're gonna blow up and explode, and and aren't able to handle the pressure. And so God begins when you when you're, when you're serving Him, you want to start serving the Lord and growing, you start going through trials many times and God seems like you're just kind of getting pounded, but he's taking out what's going to destroy you in the future with his foreknowledge and preparing you so you'll be able to handle the heat later and make it as a Christian. Now, many people uh, do not allow the fiery trial, which is a to befall them, and they do not let God, uh, let patience have her perfect work. The Bible says that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And so later on, because they didn't let God prepare them for what he had for them in the future, when they had to face what they were going to face, they weren't ready for it because they couldn't take the pounding that was going to make them better. But here's Israel, and, and God says, hey, you see that, that potter just remade the thing? <clears throat> I can do that. Well, just a few thoughts on here. Number one, the potter is always trying to work with the clay to make it something great. <clears throat> You're the clay. And the potter is always trying to work with you to make you something great. Look at verse 3. And I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work in the wheel, in the wheels. And the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Another vessel, as seemed good to the potter, to make it. He's trying to make it. He tries again. <clears throat> now, is the potter's fault? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the clay. But in any case, sometimes you can only do so much with certain clay. Sometimes you, even the master potter, it's, it's slimy, wet, weak stuff, just like we are. And God tries to work with us, but we don't always allow him. Sometimes we collapse under God trying to change us. Sometimes we get bitter. Sometimes we can't handle what comes into our lives that, that God is bringing that fiery trial, trial which is to make us better. <clears throat> God can work with us and try to form us. And maybe we're not pliable and, and we get marred because God is trying to form us into something. We're not, al we don't, we're not allowed that. We have a fault in us. We have something that will not let God do that. Sometimes it's because we won't listen to authority that God puts in our life. Sometimes Sometimes because we have bitterness in our hearts. Sometimes we have such strong will about something we want to do or something we want to be that we don't let God form us. And instead of being changed, we get marred. We get messed up. We throw up our hands. We quit. We get angry. We, 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 we give up. We, we collapse. We keep going to church and we just do whatever. But the message here is God says, all right, we messed that one up. All right, start again. Start again. But he's always trying to form something. Yes, it's very easy for a lump of clay to always stay a lump of clay. Pretty easy to do. Be what you've always been. It's easy. There's no stretching. There's no changing. There's no pulling. There's no twirling. There's no beating. But you're still just a hunk of clay. You're a blob. <laughs> And you're useless. <clears throat> you're useless. You know, that, that piece of clay that has to get beaten, formed, when it's a beautiful piece of pottery someday, that has beautiful vase of roses or whatever it becomes, it's a lot better than a hunk of clay that wouldn't let itself be formed. And the master potter is always trying to form us into something. He's always trying to form you uh, and, and try to make you be like Jesus and try to make you a useful, useful vessel. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, in every, in every house is all kinds of vessels, some to honor and some to dishonor. And, and God wants to form you into a vessel of honor that he can use for his cause. And he tries to make you into something. He's always working. It said what seems good to him. <clears throat> It's interesting at the end of verse 4. Another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. 
He thought it was a good idea to make another vessel, and he had a plan of what that vessel was, and he had something in mind for something that he was going to be, it was going to be used for. It was going to be sold for. Something that somebody needed. And God needs people for causes. God has great things to do. He sees the future, and he wants to form you to be that vessel for that purpose. Now, why are you being formed? You, think, you might think you're kind of strange or shape strange or weird. You're not quite fitting in or whatever. <clears throat> but understand, uh, sometimes very important vessels and tools look strange to people. But they're very important and very useful and, and do great things. And God is trying to form you as is good in his sight. He has a plan. He wants you to make you something great. He's always trying to form the clay. And he always is trying to make something great out of our lives. And what a waste if we do not find out what the plan of God is for our lives. It took me, <clears throat> it took me 25 years of being saved before I really saw what I was formed for. And it was through a bunch of things. I can't tell you how many different things it took. Now, I was serving the Lord the whole time, but he was still shaping it and shaping it and still setting me up for what ministries I would be doing and what I'd be uh, made for and good at and specifically able to do that nobody else could do. <clears throat> and, and, and he let him form me into that. <clears throat> I was laughing. Someone was asking me about, when you're talking about my trip in, in Haiti this last time, and about that big, long hike I took. How many saw the, the, the picture of the hike I took? Okay, the 10 and a half hour hike. Somebody asked me in a very obvious question. They said, why didn't you ask them where you're going that day? I said, I don't know. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> a strange thing about me is I can go in the middle of some country and they say, all right, we're going to head out and go see a church. I don't have to ask questions. I don't have to know everything. I'm not a control freak. I'm not worried about it. You can take me anywhere. If I'm preaching once or five times, it doesn't matter to me. Amen. If I'm going to the mountain, it doesn't matter to me. If I'm going to go into the valley, it doesn't matter to me. If I'm going to be in the jungle, it doesn't matter. If I'm going to be in the city, it doesn't matter to me. You know what? I'm just serving the Lord. I'm very, if you don't know this, if you don't even notice, watch me during a service, I'm very laid back. Okay? I'm very relaxed. I'm in these very strong hands, and I'm really not worried a whole bunch. You say, Pastor, you never seem worried. Is that really real? Are you putting on a neck? No, I'm totally not worried. And you know what? I probably could have asked and find out where I was going, but you know what? I like adventure. Let's see what happens. I was formed for that job. Nobody else is going to go there. I am formed for a job. God formed me, and I'm still being formed for things I'll do in the future if I'll let him form me. But it takes a while. It takes a while to make a vessel into honor and to do that. But God's trying in your life to make you into something. It seemed good for the potter to make someone into this. And God says, that's what I am, Israel. I'm trying to form you as a nation into something great. Let me form you. You've been marred. Which is our next point. The number one, a potter is always trying to work uh, with the clay to make something great. Number two, it was marred. Verse four, and the vessel that was made in the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again. Now, the point of this, this parable, it wasn't even a parable, the point of this visual illustration was to show, I want you to explain to them, you watched a great potter try to make a vessel, it didn't work out, and he made it again. He made it again. Now, listen, this is a really simple point, but, but you know what? You got messed up. Okay, let God make you again. <laughs> That's the point of this whole thing. And he said, God went, this part of it. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Isn't that awesome that if we get marred, God can form us again into something useful? <laughs> and God said, tell, go tell Israel about that. Go tell Israel what you saw because Israel's been marred. They're marred right now. They're messed up. They've been marred in my hands. They're, 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 they're not what they should be. And I've tried to form them and they have not let me. And they're messed up and they're a big clump in three pieces right now. And it's all messed up. The nation's messed up. But if the potter can do that, I can do that. 
And you're the clay, and I'm the potter. I know you weren't where you thought you'd be. I know things fell apart some. But you know what? I made it again. I made it again. So what? If it's marred, it's still able to be remade. <clears throat> you just take it, wad it back up, and start again. You can make the same thing you're going to make. You can make something better. You can do all that. See, the potter is all powerful. The clay is something he has control over. He can do whatever he wants with the clay. The clay can be formed into whatever the potter wants to be formed into, and he can do that. He has the ability of it. Let me just take it to Romans chapter 9 real briefly. It's, it's talking about Israel again. And boy, were they, they were messed up even worse this time than they were here in the Old Testament. And yet God talks about, you know what? I'm the master potter, and I can do whatever I want. In, in, in Romans in chapter 9... Romans chapter 9, what does God say about his ability to form things? Verse 21, uh, Romans 9 and verse 21, Hath not the potter power over the clay of that same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? He says, look, I'm the master potter. I have all power. I can make you into whatever I want. <laughs> It's a great assurance, the sovereignty of God, which Romans 9 is a great deal about God's sovereignty. Okay, Romans 10 is about free will. Romans 9 is about sovereignty because God has both. He gives man free will, but God has sovereignty. Both are true. And God says, you know what? I can form you into something. I have power over the clay. I can do whatever I want. If I want to pull authority over you and form you into whatever I want to, I can do whatever I want. I have power over the clay. Clay is not too hard for me. I am a potter. Clay is pliable. I'm strong. My fingers are stronger than the clay. That's a comforting thing when you understand God can form you into something great, though you don't think you're very great. Because you're not the potter. You live like the potter. You think you're the potter. You get stressed like you're the potter. But you're not the potter. You're the clay. Your job is not to form yourself into something great. Your job is to be pliable for the potter. So he can form you into something great. I don't think you know how good this is. <laughs> this is really good stuff. <laughs> so stay pliable. Maybe God has better plans for you than you do. Maybe you just need to say, I'm going to let God form me. I'm not going to do my own thing and do what I want to do and, and be self-willed. I'm going to let God form me into what I need to be. Now, that might take some hardship. That might not be easy. But he is that. It was marred. But it's no big deal. He says, look, now he, he finishes that, and, and he made a good, another vessel that seemed good to him. Verse 5, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Say the Lord, behold, as a clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Well, it's a great parable. It's a great story. It's a great illustration of how God can take and, and show them and, uh, here in the book of Jeremiah how he, how, yes, you're marred right now, but I can reform you. It's okay. The, the potter reformed it, and it's good. Then he comes to another sign, and they're related. Okay? It's the next chapter here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 19. And, and he comes to a next one, and that was the sign of the potter and the clay. This is the sign of the broken bottle, and it's different. <clears throat> Things change a little bit. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 19 and verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle, and take it for the, uh, to the uh, take of the ancient, ancients of the people, and of the ancients of the priests, and go forth in the valley of the son of Him, Hinnon, which is by the entry of the east gate, uh, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord uh, of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I'll bring evil upon this place, the which, whosoever heareth the ears in the ears shall tingle. Ooh. We just went from really tender, I can reform you, to look, I've got judgment coming. Now watch a little further, verse 9. Verse nine. <clears throat> 
And I will cause them to eat of the uh, flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And he shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege of the straightness therewith uh, wherewith their enemies. And they shall seek their lives. Uh, and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. Then thou shalt break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, as when breaketh the potter's vessel, ready, that cannot be made whole again. And they shall bury them in Tophet, and there shall be no place uh, to bury. Much different. Much different. Some things happen between these two chapters. The first chapter is, hey, I can reform you, I can reform you. Second chapter, take a, take a, a piece of pottery that's already dried. Take a bottle and tell them this is what God's going to do. And then take the bottle and throw it in the ground and let it shatter and say, look, see how that bottle's broken there? That's what's going to happen to you. And it cannot be fixed. It cannot be made whole again. Wow. It cannot be made whole. What happened and what's the difference? You ready? It's really simple. <laughs> what's the difference between the clay and the bottle? Anybody? Fire. The bottle's within fire. It can't be can't changed anymore. The bottle's hard. The bottle's hard. It can't be remade. Once it's broken, it's broken. And what I say is, once you're hard, the potter can't remake you. It's the clay he can remake. It's not the bottle. It's not the bottle. And they became hardened in between. That message that Jeremiah brought to them, they didn't accept it. And they became hard. And now, when they get broken, can't fix them. It's the clay you can fix. It's not the bottle. It's not the bottle. They became hard. I want you to go back and just watch how God knows you're going to get hard. And way back in chapter 7, verse 26, watch the hardening begin. God's trying to save them before they get too hard. <clears throat> And God's trying to give them chances. He gave them many chances throughout Jeremiah's ministry. And eventually they just didn't listen. And so they're destroyed completely as a city and as a nation. Walls burnt down, temple burnt down, everything burnt down because they wouldn't listen. It says, verse uh, 26 of, uh, this is Jeremiah 7, it says, uh, Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor uh, inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. You know, some signs of hardening we'll see here in chapter, uh, where we started chapter 18, there's some signs of hardening, some things they started to do in between this chapter 18 and chapter 19. And we can see a little bit of that, and maybe see it in our own selves, so we can be careful. We go to uh, uh, chapter 18 and verse 12, it says, And they said, There is no hope. Remember, this is right after the sign of the clay. And the potter. And Jeremiah goes, cannot God do this with you? God will reform you. God wants to use you. God wants to change you. God can use this nation again. Let him form you. But they wouldn't. And the first thing they said. <clears throat> and by the way, uh, look, look, at, look at verse 8. <clears throat> It says, and if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I'll repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at the last season, it's now speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom and build it and plant it. Because you know what? Look, you're about to get judged. The day you're about to be judged, if you could repent, I could fix you. I can fix you. It's not a problem. But then the response to Jeremiah, this message of hope from God, was first of all, the response was, there's no hope. Verse 12. And they said, there is no hope. We'll walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone, do the imagination of his, of his evil heart. See, what happens when you lose hope, 
Ezekiel struggled with this. Ezekiel 36, 37, 38. He's trying to get them to get their hope back. And I want you to understand this. When you lose your hope, you'll ever be a good Christian or God can ever use you or God will ever love you or forgive you or use you again. What you do is you just go ahead and turn yourself over to sin. You say, why? I give, there's no hope anyway. God can never use me. I'll never turn around. I can never change. And that's when you're hardening is when you lose hope. See, God is sitting there saying, look, I can reform you. It's like the potter. And they're saying, now there is no hope. So we're going to go ahead and do what we want to do anyway. Be very careful when you begin to think there's no hope for you, to, for God to use you. That's not God talking. God's the God of the potter and the clay. But the devil is the God, is the, is the, 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 the God of hardening you and making you hopeless and making you think God can't use you anymore. First of all, they lost hope. Even with the sign of the potter, they said, you know, there is no hope. Verse 12. Second thing they did is they forgot the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense into vanity. They have caused them to stumble in their ways in the ancient of past and walk in past in the way not cast up. It says, you know, they forgot about me. Now you don't consider God in all your decisions. You're just thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about God. You're not remembering how God saved you and remembering what God did in your life and remembering the miracles, the early miracles in your Christian life that God did. You're not remembering how much God loves you. You're not remembering the power of God. You're forgetting the Lord. And He's what it's all about. When you don't remember God, and it, it just becomes all about you and all about this world. But you need to remember the Lord. It's a sign of hardening when your thoughts don't even go to God when you're making your decisions throughout your day, throughout your week. You don't consider when you're about to do something wrong how God would feel. All you think about how you will feel. Because you're, not, you're forgetting the Lord. And it's part of hardening. Next, they fought his servant. Verse 18. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. <clears throat> they, found pre they found preachers and priests. They would tell them what they wanted to hear, and they got mad and said, we're going to fight against the preacher. Who's preaching the word of God? And by the way, I'm just telling you, biblically, you can follow the pattern. You can follow thou which killest the uh, prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. You will find a pattern when your heart is turning and you're becoming hard, you will immediately begin to hate the preacher. You're amazed how fast you'll become a bad guy and how much you'll change all of a sudden. Wow. And you'll find when you find somebody else who's getting messed up, you will find all of a sudden... They got all the bad things to say about the preacher. That's the biggest thing in their mind. They're not talking about how good God is or how wonderful their family is or how beautiful of a day it was. You know what they want to talk about? Preacher's talking about me. Preacher thinks he's all this and that. Yeah, the pastor, him and his family, the pastor, this and that, the preacher, the evangelist. And all of a sudden you don't like him anymore. Wow. He just completely changed in, in, in two or three weeks. And something's wrong with him. And he's really must be living something else. And there's something really he's hiding. And, and, and people who preach that way, they must have something. And all this, whatever they say. Yeah. And I don't know all they say because I don't listen to those people. Amen. Amen. What you do is just say, we don't, here's what they do. They always wrap it in their spirituality. We need to pray for the preacher. And here's what you do. You say, okay, let's pray. Father, I pray, bless the preacher, Lord. Just use him. And you start praying for the preacher. Amen. That's what you do. Sir. Say, okay. And if they continue, say, have you talked to him? And when they say no, because they don't, you say, let me take you to the verse in Matthew where it says, if you have odd against somebody, you go to them directly between you and him alone. I'm not the person to talk to. Go talk to him first. Yeah. And follow the Bible pattern. And, and, and guess what? You're going to become... Uh, You're going to become a bad guy. Uh, <laughs> That's what will happen. And you know what? And I'm not saying there are preachers who do things wrong, and there are. But you know what? You go and are brokenhearted, not critical. And that's a mile different. Sir. When somebody who's God's servant is doing something wrong, you're brokenhearted because the devil got, got a victory over one of God's servants, and you're brokenhearted. You're praying for him, not attacking. Sir. But Jeremiah was just fine. 
Jeremiah was a godly man. And they said, we're going to fight against Jeremiah because her heart was hard. And you know what? If you can demonize the messenger, then the message must not be true. <laughs> Did it to Jesus? Yeah. Okay. Did it to Paul? Did it, uh, did it Jeremiah? Did it Isaiah? Okay. Ended up dropping him with ropes into a pit of muck. Okay. And, and letting him be there in a dungeon up to his shoulders in just goo, slime. And just left him there. What's happened to Jeremiah? Why? Because there came hardened against the preacher. David was marred and sinned and did terrible things. But David did not harden. Saul was marred, and God tried to reform, and Saul wouldn't reform, and he became hard. David was used again and became a vessel who, after he was marred, was used by God to write scripture and praise God and bring glory to God and establish the kingdom and do all kinds of good things. He did after he was marred because he went back into the hands of the potter. Saul became hardened and just sought in bitterness to hurt people. And God never used him again, never heard God's voice again. And he was ruined and he became a shattered vessel that was beyond repair. God said, you are, your kingdom's taken from you, from your family, and you're done. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Proverbs 29.1, he that being often reproved uh, and hardened himself shall be destroyed suddenly and that without remedy. It's God's words. The difference is one stays clay and one becomes a bottle. Let's go back to Jeremiah 18 here and just remember what God is saying to us. <clears throat> I want to say the first thing the, 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 in this message, just the first thought, and it's none of my points, but I want to say the, the point is you can be remade. <laughs> You're marred? That's okay. God just says, oh, the vessel got marred. And the potter reformed it. The end. <laughs> because the potter can reform you. You say, I'm not what it used to be. You know what? It's okay. I messed up. I've fallen. I've done this and that. You can be remade. You can be reformed. That's the hope God gives us. Secondly, don't become the bottle. But harden yourself. Have hope that God can reuse you. Be pliable. Let him form you. Let him make you what you ought to be. The, the sign of the potter was a beautiful, hopeful sign. The next sign was brutal. And in chapter 19, those ugly words in verse 11 says, As one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again. It's not a pretty thing. I'd much rather be David who came short and did wrong and did really bad wrong. Matter of fact, he, he probably did worse than Saul if we're counting in what we'd call sin. One was murder and adultery and one was bad sacrifice and pride. But David repented and was sorry. And God said, okay, good. All right, let's reform you. Saul argued when Samuel gave him his message. You, you weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, I didn't do I did it. It was other people. He made excuses. He blamed other people. And he just said it was okay. And that clay kind of, well, it's kind of got some crust on it now. And it got harder and harder. But, you know, if you remember your first love and your first part of your Christian life where you just wanted God to use you and you said, Lord, make me and mold me and, and, and make me into something and just give your heart to Jesus and let him make you into what he wants to be. And if it hurts sometimes, it's to make you great. And stay away from getting hardened. Because when you're hardened, you get destroyed. And there's no way to fix you. Once you're hard, it's just... How do you reform a broken bottle? Okay, how do you reform a broken bottle? You can put pieces back together later, but it's hard, they don't always fit. The glue doesn't always work. The thing doesn't always hold water anymore. Yeah, well, you can try to do it if it wants to be rebuilt, but you know, it's a lot easier to stay clay <laughs> until a potter's formed you into what you want to be and what he wants you to be until he's formed you into a beautiful vessel. And then God's all right, let me, let me put you in the oven for a while. We're going to make you stay just like that. A vessel unto honor. So let God form you. Don't become hard. Be clay. Don't be the jar. 
because if you've been marred, he can reform you. And do not think, do not think, do not think, you know, man, pastor, I've just messed up and I've just been messed up for a while and I'm just all over the place. I'm just, I'm never going to get back on track. No, no. <laughs> Cannot the potter, where does it say that? Verse 4 and 5. He made it again. Then the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter, so he made it again. Another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. And then said the word of the Lord unto me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do to you as this potter, say the Lord? Can God make you into something great? Even though right now you're not a beautiful vessel, you're just a pile? Of clay? Cannot God do that? Yes, he can. Amen. Let him form you. God said, eh, they got marred. No big deal. Tell, tell them about that, that pottery making the clay. I can do that to them. That's what he says to you today.